Okay, everybody, welcome back to Who's Your Band? Who's Your Band? Uh, I am joined today by my co-host, Mr. Sean Morton. How are you, Sean? Wonderful, Jeffrey. You believe that Please? shit? No, I don't either. Continue. Um, I hate your shirt. Uh, I like, Thank I you. Want, I, I would like to open up by saying I, how much I... It, it's a good thing we're in different states right now because I would just I would just like to punch you in the face for wearing that shirt. But um, I will... <laughs> Let's, let's go back to zero. Let's bring it in because I am excited. I am really, really excited. I know we both are. Yes, uh, we are. We love, we love this singer. We love her. Uh, oh my God, you've seen her on The Voice. Uh, her videos are off the chart. I love them. Give it up for Mariah, uh, for Micah. For Mika. Mika. That's why I asked Mika. before. I know. <laughs> but if I don't mess up a name, then it's not a show. Holy Christ. Mariah, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Well, just so you guys, so you have a little background. We are two stand-up comedians who are just music fanatics. So if you hear us berating each other, that's kind of why you understand why we're doing it. <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. Awesome. Love. We, it is. On if, his if, end. If, if, right. If Sean doesn't say something bad about me, then I know he has a problem. Uh, okay. That, <laughs> I, I've, I've really done something. But speaking of, I'm, I got to get into this right away. I hate the voice. Okay. I loved you on The Voice. You were great. Your audition, uh, you did crazy on you. Why couldn't they turn around faster? That, that's <laughs> why I'm sitting there. I'm like, after 15 seconds, this is the girl. This is your voice. She was, oh, you were awesome. You. Off the charts. And then, <laughs> and then finally, Miley turns around and then they're all giving us stupid looks. Turn around. She's... And then, and then you, 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 the, 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 uh, what was it, the sing off? The sing, remember the sing off? Oh, yeah, the battles. Right, right. And you sang, uh, oh, what's, what's that song? Um, uh, eyes, something with eyes, okay. hazel eyes. When, what was the song that you sang? For the battles, played, I did American Woman. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, uh, okay, but I mean, I, 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 was, I was angry. I like, uh, how do you not win that show? Uh, how did you feel about it? How did you feel about uh, Miley helping you? Um, I, I mean, I, I really enjoyed being on Team Miley. There were a lot of experiences that I, you know, I, I completely wouldn't, re I, I don't regret it. I would not trade it in for anything. I met my best friend on, from being on Team Miley. Um, you know, I, it's, cool just to be in the presence of Miley Cyrus because you know like you were my if you were me like growing up I used to watch Hannah Montana every Saturday <laughs> <laughs> weird but um yeah it was it was pretty cool and and she was fun she was funny and and she was really cool and she cared about her team um so it was it was cool it was cool to work with her no, I'm going to say that this is a weird year because of COVID, but there's been a lot of great music that's come out this year. And I got an advanced copy today of Plastic Hearts, Miley's new album that's coming out next week. And I'm telling you right now, it's right up there for album of the year. Really? It is an amazing, amazing record. I've been a fan of hers for a long, long time. Um, and, you know, a lot of people really turned the corner with her with the Joe Rogan podcast. She was really, really open. Right. And uh, just brutally honest. And, you know, mm -hmm. she did a couple of uh, great live versions of Heart of Glass by Blondie and, and Zombie by the Cranberries. Yeah, all those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good. And she put them on the album, too, as like bonus tracks at the end. But let me tell you, this record is going to blow the roof off a lot of people. It really is. I'm so excited for it. Yeah, it's a good one. It's really, really good. No, it blew the roof. The, the, the roof off was uh, Mariah's version of doing Call Me. Okay. <laughs> You did a version of Call Me. I watched all your videos, Mar Mariah. Oh, I did do that. You, you did do that. Um, I, I probably know about more about you right now than you know about you. Um, <laughs> that sounds really creepy coming uh, from uh, a oh, seven-year-old oh, guy I in Staten Island. Know. It does. I'm it I'm does. Glad. But let me, let me start off by asking a serious question. How do you go about picking out the songs that you cover? Because you're a young girl, but you are an old soul. I mean, it's it's insane what you're picking out, and it's so encouraging to see like people your age really digging this type of music. Yeah, well, I my dad uh, raised me on, you know, all sorts of classics and and mainly eighties uh, hair metal. That was, was he my dad. A musician? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Uh, neither of my parents uh, are musicians at all. Um, 
but yeah, he just loved, he, but he loves music, you know? So he always raised me around like the eighties. There would always be like that metal show on in the morning, every Saturday or, um, what else? Uh, eighties pop-up videos, like those, those little things. So we would always watch those and I just fell in love with it. You know, I fell in love with the guitar guys in, in particular. Um, and so that's where a lot of my inspiration from, uh, for picking songs to do comes from. Who did your father listen to? Like what was always like the backdrop in the Famika household? Uh, my dad would listen to my dad would listen to anybody from Aerosmith, which is my first love musically when I was like five. Um, but my dad would listen to anybody from you know Aerosmith, Heart, of course, to like. But his favorite bands were, you know, Skid Row and and Poison. He loves Poison. Um, he loved. Um, I mean, Skid Row and Poison were the biggest bands from well, now i can i can say this since you mentioned this now we were going to surprise you today and i'm not gonna and we didn't know this either we were supposed to have ricky rocket from poison on this episode with you what but oh he had God. but he was confused with next week so we right. may have him next week we were gonna try and do awesome. like an old school versus new school kind of vibe right. but uh our talent coordinator uh failed us this week oh, so i'm gonna say that again Yet again, yet again, um, but it's okay. You know, no, one thing I, I want to I want to piggyback off of what Jeff said too is, you know, your love of of older music is really refreshing because you're pretty young. You're only like 24, right? I just turned 20. Just turned 20. You just turned 20. A few weeks ago, yeah. Wow. So, like, you know, automatically you would think like, you know, you would be into like the Lizzie Hales and like Marina Brink from In This Moment or like, you know, Haley from Paramore and stuff like that. It's really refreshing to see you going into like the deep catalog of like Heart and Skid Row. When I saw the Steel Heart video, that was the one that really blew me away because... I sang for a long time. I'm horrible. I'm a shitty singer. I have tried to hit that note from Steelheart probably since 1989. Never even <laughs> come close to hitting it once. Never once. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's Honestly, that was easily the hardest song I've done. Uh, honestly, because... It's just, it's not, it's not even like a one, like a, you know, there's, there's some, there's a lot of songs out there where it's like the rest of the song is, is good. It's not that, it, you know, it's simple, but then there's like one huge high note. It's not even like that. It's like the whole song. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Notes. And so I was like, I, I'm like, I'm like, I'm a girl and this is hard for me. <laughs> like, I, you know what I mean? Uh, so it's just, it's incredible. He's incredible. And, uh, it was the hard, I was nervous to do it because of that reason, but, um, I figured it's a, I, I love you gotta go for it. Yeah. You gotta yeah. go for that. And that's the thing I think that's so interesting about you as well is that you're, you're not afraid to take chances with these songs and put it out there. Uh, another one that I was really impressed with was, um, interesting choice. The Dawkins song, you went with dream warriors and it's a great song. And I'm thinking, wow, I would love to hear you also do Alone Again because I could see you killing that. Yeah, I, you know, I've gotten a couple people actually request that that song from Dockin as well. So I guess I'm going to have to do it at some point. Please. I, and how many times have you been referred to as the new Ann Wilson? Because Jesus Christ, man, again, watching that audition and you close your eyes. Like, like, if I didn't see you, you would think it's either Ann Wilson herself or it has to be her daughter because it is perfect. Thank you. Um, I it, it comes up a lot uh, that I remind people of Ann Wilson, and uh, and I'm not going to complain because I that's who would ever <laughs> complain about that. I mean, she's a legend. She's legendary, and. You know, of course, I look up to her vocally tremendously, and uh, it's it feels really good to to uh, you know be compared to her in a way. So, you know, besides being the singing though, when did you start playing guitar? Mm. Um, I, I guitar actually was my first passion. It was my first instrument. I started playing guitar around five or six, um, and mm. I actually didn't start singing until I was about ten. Oh um, wow! Yeah, because I didn't know that I could sing because. 
here's the thing. I am such an introvert at heart, despite, which is weird because of what I do, but I, I am a total introvert. And so, you know, I always was very quiet when I was little, I kept to myself. I just, I, you know, I did what I, and I, so I wasn't thinking, wow, I have a great voice, you know, (laughs) at like 10 years old or whatever. Um, And so it kind of, I kind of noticed that I could sing when people around me would tell me, like my family and stuff. And so it kind of just took off, but I, you know, I love doing it. I just didn't know that I had a good voice when I was younger. Um, But yeah, guitar was my first instrument. So I started playing guitar around five or six. Cool. Who influenced you guitar wise? Who were, who were your idols then? I, I'm assuming one of them has to be Joe Perry since you're a big Aerosmith fan. That's the number one. Yeah, that's my number one uh, guitar. Um, that, that's my number one inspiration for getting into guitar is Joe Perry. I, I love Joe Perry. It was just something about him is like, and like his look, like I was just thinking when I was, when, when I was like five, I would look at, I would, I would watch Aerosmith music videos and I'm like, this guy is so freaking cool. And, he was and born it, to be a rock star. Oh my gosh, he was. Right. The way he talks, the way he walks, the way he moves. Absolutely. Like, like, this dude is freaking smooth, man. Yeah. There's <laughs> no other. Th- th- he's not an accountant. Right. You know, like, he can't, he right. can't what walk else would Joe Perry be? Right. He's like a rock star. Right. Yeah. He's one of the, he's, you know, <laughs> rock stars can get away with a lot of stuff. Like they can, they right. can have regular day jobs. Joe Perry is born and bred to just be on stage with a guitar with, with many, oh, many okay. like, scarves around his neck oh definitely no definitely and i and when i was yeah sorry my computer just turned a different color um yeah when i was little and i and i and i thought his guitars were so cool too i mean his tone was so cool um and his his guitars i fell in love with like i i remember he has this really cool like fiberglass one mm-hmm. I, I just found it so cool i was like wow nobody else has a guitar like that and so that that's really what made me fall in love with Joe Perry and ultimately guitar when I was little. What, what are some of the songs? What three top Aerosmith songs for you? Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, that is such a hard question. I I mean I just know like hundreds and hundreds of Aero. Like I I literally grew up on Aero. Like I used to call my room Aeroville because it was just filled with Aerosmith mm-hmm. stuff. Um. Hmm. Man. I really, really like, this is so hard because there's so many different Aerosmith eras, you know, like there's, there's like 70s. So take one from the seventies, one from the eighties, one from the nineties. There you go. Love it. All right. Oh, from the, uh, from, from the seventies, I would probably say, you know, like, uh, probably something off the, the toys in the attic album. Would you say Train Kept a Rolling? Did you like that one? Oh, I love that one. I love that one. I would play, I, that That actually was like one of my number one picks on the Guitar Hero Aerosmith that I would always have. I love that song. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, uh, so from the 70s, I would say like, I, I really liked um, Sweet Emotion. Their, their thing of uh, Cry Me a River. Hmm. We got to bring in Devin Rosenblatt for this one. Yeah, right. Go, let's go 80s. Let's go 80s. 80s are a little easier for me because you really only have like the late 80s, really. Right. Um. Okay. So definitely do looks like a lady. It's a I great feel one. Like, I think that was right. Wasn't that like 87 or something? 87. Yeah. That's the permanent okay. vacation record. Right. Right. So uh, do looks like a lady. Um. What else from the 80s? I really liked, uh, I think it was Angel. Was, was that in the 90s? I can't remember. No, Angel 90s. was from uh, Permanent Vacation, too. That's not 90s? No, Angel's from uh, Permanent Vacation as well. Yeah, okay. So my top songs when I was younger for that era was definitely though, uh, Dude Looks Like a Lady, Angel, and uh, Permanent, or, and uh, Walk This Way with Run DMC. <clears throat> well, that was, that was 80s. Yeah. Those yeah. are my three. Yeah. And they recorded that one too. They didn't. They didn't just sample. They actually went back in the studio and did it again. Yeah. No. It's. It's. You, you could tell. It just sounds so much. It sounds so much more like swaggy. You know. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I, I gotta tell you, my favorite eighties Aerosmith song. It's. It's a. It was a hit, but it wasn't like a monstrous hit. It was what it takes. 
because I thought oh, I had so many. Oh my gosh, that's, that's a nice a song. Yeah, that's a good See, one. That's why I can't pick. The, that's why I can't yeah. pick. Yeah, it's a little tough, but that's you know that was a it was an MTV video hit, but I thought it was uh, very different for them. You know, with the whole uh, harmonica and everything. I love yeah. it. I like personally. the way that song closes too. Where he mm-hmm. kind of oh, scats, yeah. Uh, yeah. Scats, yeah, out on that. I um, love the solo in that one. The solo is so melodic and it has so much feeling in that one. So let me ask you. Let me ask you a guitar question, real quick. So, um, do you remember your first guitar and what was it? My first ever guitar was a. It was like a little twenty dollars guitar from Target. Mm-hmm. I was five or six. My grandmother got it for me for my birthday and or like Christmas or something. One of the big occasions, and it was. I remember it had like the built. You know, like the ones with the built-in amp. It was oh, like it was horrible. Amp. Yeah, that was a oh, horrible. Oh, and you just flick a switch on, but, but, you know, I thought it was the best thing ever when I was, when I was like six <laughs> and uh, I took that thing everywhere with me. I have it hanging up on my wall to this day. It, it was so cute. It was like a foot and a half long. <laughs> it was so, it was, that was my first guitar. I guess my first real guitar was an Ibanez. <clears throat> okay. I had a when purple I- Ibanez for a long time. I still have my <laughs> first one. It's a, it's a canary yellow and black Epiphone. Mm. that has Scooby-Doo stickers all over it. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I, the stickers, yeah. My, see, my first, my Ibanez has a whole bunch of stickers. I, put, I stuck like Evanescent stickers on it and I have an a, 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 a Aerosmith uh, sticker and all sorts of stuff on it. Mariah, you, you hit on my band right there. And I can tell you're a fan. As well. I love Evanescence. I think Amy Lee is top three singers of all time she's so underrated like like she should be a household name and i was so happy when you did the uh the cover of uh my immortal Mm. oh my god that was so good amy lee is like my joe perry with vocals amy lee is my number one vocal inspiration uh you know primarily amy lee lizzie hale and lady gaga those are my three main vocal inspirations and uh I just, but Amy Lee was the, was the number one when I first get, got into singing. I mean, I held everything up to Amy Lee. I was like, okay, like this sounds okay, but like, is Amy Lee good? No. You, have to keep it <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, every- absolutely. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. So have- what was the, what was the first, was, was it, um, uh, bring me to life? Was that the first time you heard her and saw it and saw the video and saw how cool it was? Was it that, like, what was, what was the first that got you into Evanescence and Amy Lee? Well, my, my parents would, um, we used to take, we, we used to take road trips all the time. I mean, we still do every year since I was little, we would drive to Florida. And so you can imagine that's a long car ride and a lot of CDs would be playing. Um, and where one are you of the from? CDs, where, where, where are you right now? I'm in upstate New York. Okay, so you and your family would, would go from upstate New York to Florida. Yeah, so it's okay, it okay. like a 25 hour drive. So sure. um, you know, there's a lot of music playing. So they had um, the the Fallen album that they would put in there, and I would always hear my two favorite songs off that album were, um, of course, "Bring Me to Life," and then I loved um, "Going Under." Those are my two favorite songs when yeah. I was little. And Don't I would hear them. Too. Yeah, and I would always hear them, and I always loved Evanescence. Um, but I really, really started getting into them around 10 or 11 when I first you know, knew that I could sing. And uh, <clears throat> that kind of sparked my love for Evanescence even more. Nice. Are there any songs that you haven't done yet that you're like, oh, I would still love to do this one? What, what's flown on the, the uh, Mariah f- uh, radar, if you will? Um, wow, there's a lot. I mean, I... You know, I really, really have always wanted to do like a, a rock slash metal version of Lady Marmalade by Patti LaBelle. Sure, yeah. I, I just love it. I love Patti LaBelle. I love old school stuff like that. Um, so I guess that song would be like one of my top songs that I haven't done yet that I want to do. I can see you doing that, but you got to do it with a, a full band. That, right? Oh my gosh, totally. That could never be yeah. just... Yeah, no, I, I want to do it with the with the full band. Yeah, you know, um, Sean was the one that turned me on to you, and he, you know, he was raving about your version of Barracuda, and at the, about the same time, 
I was also kind of raving about uh, Nino uh, Betancourt's uh, version of Baron Cuda with uh, Liv uh, Warfield singing. Did you get to hear that version? I didn't. I didn't. It's it's great. Listen, your version is great too. I want to ask you who's uh, who's playing drums with you on that one because she was also really good, keeping amazing time. Yeah, that's my uh, friend Brooke, um, and now bandmate um, Brooke. Her name is Brooke Colucci. Smart um, choice. Yeah, she she goes by uh, Rock Angel on Instagram, and she's she's a, a viral drummer. You know, she's got a huge YouTube following because she posts covers, and rightfully so because she's amazing that girl is 17 years old are you and kidding really? what no you know, I, i'm not joking we, that girl we is 17. Need more of this generation i'm I, yeah. real real music real musicians mm -hmm. and speaking of that what's your thoughts on on um artists that now play with backing tracks and don't play live any any thoughts on something like that um i i mean my thing is i kind of i mean i guess backing tracks are I think that sometimes as a, as a, if you're doing like the more modern thing, they're your friend, obviously, because well, you have so the, many. What's the more modern thing? What, what does that mean? Like if it's, if it's not just a guitar, bass, drums, and like your, your standard like rock thing, <clears throat> and like you're, you have somebody playing keys or whatever. Um, like if, if my band now just went on and we had a whole bunch of synth tracks, on our, cause we were doing like modern rock, you know what I'm saying? Like right. with, okay. with those sounds and cause a lot of it, you know, a lot of it is like, uh, there's a lot of samples and, and, you know, techno things, not techno, but like industrial sounds and stuff like that. So I feel like tr backing tracks are your friends there for live performances. Um, I could, for me personally, I'm kind of neutral. I could go either or, um, but mostly I lean towards play as much as you can live. Um, but I also do love pop music. I really do. So I don't, I don't find too much of a problem with it. Um, I mean, if you're lip syncing though, then I'm like, come on, man, that's not cool. That, that's when I draw the line. Um, but for me, it's kind of just like whatever your forte is. I, I think if you're a rock band, it's best to have backing tracks, you know, but I don't, I, I don't really, have I, I like, it. yeah, I like the, the live. I like the imperfections in the live. Like I was watching a video. I mean, one of the thing you were, you were opening, I guess, for Striper, right? Yeah. Over at the Stone Pony. And uh, you were doing 18 in life. And, yeah. it, and it was, and it was just you, I think on the, on the guitar, right? Just, yeah, that that was an acoustic opening, I believe. Yeah, and it was again. I thought it it was great. You can you can hear the crowd, but, but you're hearing your voice and how pure. Right. And it's that is that is what live music and music is. I mean, Sean, right. would you? You know, with yeah, the, I agree. I mean, like, I there's nothing better for me than to just go into a show. And you know, we've all been struggling right. for the last year about not going to concerts. You know, mm -hmm. you want to hear. I, I don't care if a band screws up. I don't care. Exactly. It happens. Right. I, don't, right. I don't care if a, if a singer's voice breaks. Like one of the worst experiences I ever had was one of my favorite bands was Shine Down. I love them. I've always yeah. been a fan of them. I call, I, we all caught Brent Smith lip syncing in oh. one of the songs because he was walking and his voice was still going. But it was, <laughs> I've seen him on five different tours. Really? Yeah. I've seen him on five <laughs> different tours. It was the only time I ever saw him do that. So yeah. who knows? Maybe he, maybe he was not feeling well. Maybe so it was been having a hard time. Yeah. Could have been, but listen, I would much rather have a band be off beat for half a song or hear a guitar going out of tune or hearing right. a, Hearing a singer struggling for a few minutes, like you know, if you're catching right. their breath. look, we've all seen Vince. I mean, that's what helps you perfect your live performance too, is all the mess ups and stuff. Oh God, yeah. And listen, I, I can, you know, I went to, you know, you mentioned Lady Gaga before, and I saw her in Vegas two years ago, two nights in a row. She does the one show, completely full band, you know, dancing mm -hmm. her ass off, not missing a beat, and then the next right. night, it's just her and a piano. Mm -hmm. where, where you're vulnerable like you're like you're very vulnerable when you play because it's just you and your guitar and right. you know i i mean i don't know if you do multiple takes or whatever but i kind of think that you just you're so a one and done you you yeah. get in front of the camera you do it and it's done but yeah 
that's it's a different kind of musician where you're not where you really just say I don't care. This is how I'm going to sing. I know I I know I can do it. I know I can play. And I'd rather hear a note screwed up. I'd rather if you're playing a solo, I'd rather hear it going. You know, a, a little bit off key. It's more real for me. Right. Yeah. You know? No, I hear that, and I totally agree with that too. I really do. Right. What made you do again? My favorite band all time, Sabbath. Okay. And you picked a Dio version uh, of Sabbath. You want to, yeah, you know, she does uh, Heaven and Hell. Yep. I did. Yeah, yeah I did. Hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what made you I, go go with that one, man? That, again, amazing song, but you, you, were, you were tremendous. Thank you. I, you know, I, I mean, I love that song. And what actually made, what actually pushed me, I've always loved the song, but what actually pushed me to cover that was my guitar player at the time. You know, we both loved uh, Dio. And he's like, Ryan, you got to watch this performance from 2005 where uh, Dio did, you know, um, Heaven and Hell. So I'm watching it and I'm like, I just, like, this is just amazing. And it just, it just made me want to do it live because I love Ronnie James Dio. I, I think his voice was just perfect. I mean, he was like the standard One of the for top me. three rock I, singers of all time. I mean, he was just amazing and he seemed like such a great guy too i mm-hmm. mean i didn't know him, but from what i've seen he seemed like a really genuine great guy i've watched a lot of interviews with him and i could relate to him in a lot of ways and i and i also like the fact that he you know was this tiny guy but had a huge voice and i thought it was so funny because i'm like you know i relate to that because i'm only 4 11 um <laughs> so anywhere to meet me in person they're like wow you look so much bigger on stage i'm like well, um, and so I, I, you know, it, all of that on top of loving the song, I just figured it was fitting to do it. Yeah, I can definitely see if you're going to do a Sabbath song, definitely doing a Dio instead of an Ozzy because your, your voice tends to go yeah. more towards the Dio side. Definitely. Yeah. That was, just, that was a good choice of songs too. Yeah. And me personally, like I, I like both Sabbath, but like I, Dio's voice is just, it, it's not, I mean, it's one of a kind. And um, no, I'm, and, and Ozzy's is too. I just feel like I, there's more emotions that come out of me uh, that I feel whenever I hear Ronnie James Dio's voice. Yeah, because he's more of a pure <laughs> than Ozzy is. You know, he's 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 right. a pure talent. Ozzy's a front man. You know, and he's got soul. You know, he's got soul in his voice, and that's what right. I love too. Mariah, do you like Broadway musicals? I do. Yeah, I I do. I my grandmother would actually take us to see. Um, some growing up and I always really watched, I'm not like super into it. Like I couldn't tell you all the names of the, of the shows, but I really do enjoy seeing them. Now you're only, I didn't realize you were only 20 years old. I thought you were a little older as well, but did you ever mm-hmm. consider, or have, you, have you ever been approached about doing a Broadway musical? Uh, I think I have. I don't, I don't remember exactly. I think there was something for like school of rock, uh, something like that. Oh no, I tried out. I actually, okay. When I was like 12, I tried out for a Broadway, for a school of rock on Broadway. Um, you know, I didn't get a call back, which I totally get. Cause I was like this little girl, my hair was pulled back in a ponytail. I was not, you know, when, you, when you're Broadway, you gotta be, you gotta have like that. Right. That, that thing, that personality. Yeah, I just didn't have it. I was an introvert. To be honest, I didn't want to do it. Um, I probably still, wouldn't just because I much would rather prefer just getting up there with a band and being a front woman and telling my story and connecting with people uh, and helping people, um, you know, and touching people with my music. Um, so I probably wouldn't, you know, partake in that, but it's been a thought in my mind before. I'm going to give you three battles that you have to pick your your quick answer, <laughs> and I want your honest answer really quick. You're going to get okay. three of them. Kelly Clarkson versus Pink. Who do you pick? Kelly Clarkson. Okay. Gwen Stefani versus Beyonce. Beyonce. Okay. Lady Gaga versus Mariah Formica. Lady, Lady Gaga. <laughs> yeah, she's... I love Lady Gaga. Yeah, she's she's one of a kind. You know what I'm really dying for? I'm, I'm dying for a rock album from her. Like if you if you if you're a, total a fan, rocker. she's a yeah. total rocker. 
I mean, if she you, was if you out in this her, trip. Why does everybody say that she's a total rock out? Because I have a story. Any. All right, so here's a story, Jeff, in case you didn't know this, okay? So Charlie Benanti, the drummer from Anthrax, right. Right, brings his daughter backstage. He gets arranges to meet Lady Gaga. His daughter's a huge fanatic fan. Mm. Gaga walks in. And his daughter's eyes light up and she almost, and Gaga almost started crying because Anthrax is one of her favorite bands. So she freaks out. She's a huge Anthrax, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Metallica fan. She is a heavy metal fanatic. Yeah. And she touches she, on she it. like once Metallica but then the, they got a, the Grammys in 2017. Yeah, she did. It was, I, I, th- I thought it was a great performance. A lot of people didn't yeah. like it, but I thought it was really outside the box for her and I loved it. Well, they pushed James the rock and roll agenda. You know, what you see right. is rock and roll is is overseen on uh, all these award shows and even the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's starting to take <laughs> a backseat too. And I think, you know, have a, one of these artists and, you know, you know, take the charge, take the lead and really push right. rock. Like, remember that, that right. year that you did the duet with uh, Metallica? Yeah, 2017. Right, 2017. Yeah. Metallica wasn't even introduced and it was their song. Yeah. Yeah. I think the so thing I, about her, which is great, is that her her trends in her albums change every single time. Oh, you know, for she, sure. You know, the first two were dance, and then she had, you know, the art pop, which is a little more synth pop. You know, the, oh. the second one was a little more acoustic and a little more ballad-driven. Then you see the Star right. is Born stuff, which is off the charts. I love that. She is going to come out with a rock album, I'm telling you. And now it's your responsibility to yes. write a song for her. Oh, <laughs> I, would, I would hope so. I I would hope to do one with her. That that would be literally like my biggest dream ever. Like I would die happy if I could sing a song with Lady Gaga. Um, yeah, I, but, I love her. She's right. my favorite. Besides Aerosmith, if a band asked you to be the the lead singer, what band would you love to be in? Um, probably Evanescence. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what I thought she was going to say. See, I, I, mean, I, I, I would have loved to hear Skid Row. Like, I would love huh? to hear Skid Row because you know what? Sebastian Bach, oh. all right, great singer. Great singer in the 1980s. Who, did, who by the, the way, Sean did Broadway. Who did Broadway, but let's just be yeah. honest yeah. right now. Jekyll and Hyde. Right now, voice is a little cracking. I would love to see Mariah fronting Skid Row. I think that would be great, personally. Oh, I, that would be really fun. I mean, a lot of people would be pissed. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but who cares? But, you know, that who would be That'd be fun. Now, I know you were doing some shows with Kip Winger. Did you do those already or were they pushed off? No, it's actually, uh, as of right now, it's still happening. I believe it's December 12th, actually. So coming up, you know, pretty soon. Cool. And where are they? Uh, uh, this one is in Houston, Texas. Nice. They're a little mm-hmm. more free. They're a little more free with their music down there. So you'll, oh, you'll, yeah. probably get the, you'll probably get that show off, which is good. Yeah, definitely. Now, how do you feel like, do you ever see yourself swaying toward, from the rock uh, vibe and going into a different direction? Like, you know, I, I've always, I've said this a lot on this show. I feel that country is the biggest genre right now in music. Do you ever see yourself doing something like more of a country vibe or more of like a pop, like a pop rock kind of vibe? Or you see yourself just saying, screw this. I got my guitar. I'm playing Sabotage next. Um. <laughs> I actually did, like, when I got off The Voice, um, I figured, all right, you know, rock is not super hot right now. Um, and, and so I was like, why don't I try a more mainstream thing? I'm telling you, I was miserable. I don't ever, ever, which I'm glad that I did because it showed me, hey, you're not meant for this. But it's like, even if I tried to do that more mainstream type of thing, it's like, I don't. I could not hide the fact that I'm rock, like rock and roll is in my blood. I don't look pop. I, I look rocker. I, I don't, you know, I wear black all the time. I, my hair is crazy and big and I, I don't, I love the darker stuff and I, I just love rock and roll. Um, I, I definitely have some songs that are more pop influenced with some melody but it's, it's never, I, I always, always follow it up with heavy music in the back. Um, there's never, yeah, no short answer to your question is no. No, I, that's, honest, that's great because let me I tell you something. Any, yeah. You know, we're, we're performers energy. too. We're, we're performers and we, right. we do what we want to do. And right. it's really, it, it actually makes me happy to hear somebody who is as young as you be as confident in what you want to do. Cause the easiest route 
you have the talent, you have the voice, you have the guitar. The easiest thing for you to do is to have some slime ball from Hollywood say, hey, you know what? You could be the next pop star. And then you change your sound and you make $14 million and then you're miserable at 23, you know? Staying well, I mean, true to yourself is just amazing. Right. And it's like when people say that to me, like to me, it doesn't mean anything because I'm like, I don't, you know, and I also find that what I love about rock and roll is it seems everybody's a family, you know, um, in a way, uh, especially at, at live shows. Uh, there's something about rock concerts that you just don't get at pop concerts. Sure. Um, I get that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, what, were, what were some of the concerts that you, you've been to? What was like the last couple of concerts you went to before all this went down? Oh, uh, Shine Down. Actually, I hey, I actually got to talk to Brent for a little bit, so that was really cool. Um, nice. I got to meet I, I. So I went to see Shine Down. Um, Papa Roach. Papa Roach was with them that night. Um, what else did I see? Uh, I saw Ariana Grande. Um. I saw animals as leaders. Uh, who else? I saw. It's pretty all over the place. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, I, I love all sorts of different music. I mean, I love every single genre. Um, yeah. Did you ever get a chance to see Aerosmith live? I have. Yeah, yeah. I saw them when I was nine or ten. I saw them in Atlantic City. Uh, Sammy Hagar actually opened the show. Oh, oh my god! It yeah. Was awesome. He was so so cool. And then after afterwards, he was like, "Guys, I'm gonna be on the beach. If everyone wants to come have a drink with me." I was like, "Oh my gosh, this guy is so cool." And just think, one more year from now, and you can actually do that. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love I love Sam here. Are you are you a, are you um a fan of uh? I I know you did the version of um. Uh, Ain't talking about uh, love. Ain't talking about love. She plays guitar on it. Great. Uh, but did you like the uh, the Hagar version of uh, Van Halen? I did. I, I did like uh, a couple of their songs. I like like I liked that uh, one that's like "Come on, baby, finish what you started." Like, oh, yeah. I, I like. Um, but I gotta say, I I really am just a David Lee Roth fan <laughs> when it comes to Van Halen. Um, but I, I really liked Sammy Hagar's like solo stuff. Um, but I just always, for me, my dad, I, I was raised on knowing Van Halen as Van Halen with David Lee Roth. Um, cause that's what my dad liked. Um, and so when I heard them with Sammy, I was like, okay, like this is cool. But it wasn't like when I heard them with David Lee Roth. What did your mom listen to? My mom, my mom listens to all sorts of stuff. Like my mom loves, my mom likes a lot of pop. My mom loves Justin Timberlake. She used, she loved like Justin Timberlake and she loved Britney Spears. <laughs> um, and I mean, my mom likes my music cause she's like biased, but, <laughs> um, you know, she likes some hailstorm stuff. She likes, uh, she likes Evanescence. Um, nothing like super heavy. She doesn't, she doesn't really like, you know, like the eighties hair bands that we were just talking about. She doesn't like them. Uh, she's just kind of more, of, she's more of a pop, a pop girl, but she'll listen to some rock. And you, you have a brother too, right? Is your brother Gabriel? I have two brothers. Yeah. And, but Gabriel, is he in the band as well? He's not in the band, but he does. I, I'll have, you know, if I'm doing an acoustic show, um, I would have him come up and do a few songs with me because I just, you know, my brothers are my best friends. And I, uh, I I thought that it would be fun to have him come up and do a song with me and just kind of help loosen the atmosphere because he's a good, my brother Gabriel, he is a great performer. I mean, he will, he will work that stage and, uh, you know. Is he primarily I'll, a guitarist? No, he's actually a singer. He would come up and sing with me. Okay. Yeah. okay. He, doesn't, he doesn't play guitar at all, actually. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, but the girls love him. So it was it was something to get the crowd excited about. <laughs> now, what kind so, of guitar do you play on stage? Now, do you have an endorsement yet? Or do you play all different kinds of stuff? I do have uh, an endorsement. I'm endorsed by ESP. Ah, and so okay. I, play, I play ESPs, yeah. I have one as well. Very play nice sound. My favorite one right now is the the um you know it's it's, it's although it's the LTD I mm -hmm. just couldn't even resist getting this guitar because 
because I was like, oh my gosh, the finish on it's it's the uh, it's the EC one thousand, but it's the the Violet Andromeda, and mm-hmm. that thing is just freaking ridiculous. And what I loved about it is it has the um, the Fishman pickups in it, and I'm telling you, those are my favorite pickups I've ever played so far. <clears throat> it's it's amazing. It has the uh, the uh, switch where you could switch from passive to active. So you can go back and forth and get all sorts of different tones out of that guitar. I love it. They're, they're a great guitar. I got the 401, I think it's a 401C, I think it's called. It's the much, yeah, it's the much lesser line than the guitar you have. I just want to let I you. I have one of those. <laughs> yeah, it's a great sound. It's really chunky and uh, I, dro- I drop it down. That's cool. Yeah, I, I drop it down a little mm. bit though. I drop it down to either drop D or I even drop it down a full step and do it to drop C because I like a little bit of a heavier, chunkier sound, but they're great, solid guitars. Congratulations yeah. on that. You, you couldn't, you couldn't have a better sponsor. Thank you. Yeah. I, I honestly, I love them. Uh, I was going to say, Sean, when do you turn into Paul Bond and start doing, bringing your guitars up on stage with you? Uh, none. Cause I still write jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not a fan of musical comedy. I think, I think it has to be a little separate. You know, if you're a musician, fine. If you're a comedian, fine. Don't, don't mix it. Don't mix the races when it comes to that. And become the next Dimitri Martin. <laughs> yeah, no, I, no. You'll see me jumping off the Dimitri Martin Bayonne Bridge before I ever do that, believe me. Oh, please do. That would... <laughs> oh, can't stand that stuff. I really can't. So I was asking, when, when's the, uh, Sorry, the album yeah. coming out? No, no worries. Uh, album coming out. Uh, where could people uh, get get uh, Mariah Famica uh, music? Uh, so as of right now, we don't have an album coming out, but we uh, have recorded a few songs uh, that will be out in a little bit. Um, but as far as what I have out right now, uh, I can be found on... Apple Music, Spotify, uh, Google Play, Amazon Music, um, YouTube, all the good stuff. Well, that's how I, f- I found you on Facebook. It was one of those things where you're just scrolling and oh, scrolling. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. How did, you, how did you find him? Because I got to give Sean credit for this one. And I don't like giving Sean credit for a lot of things. But he really, he was the one that said, hey, you got to check this out. And he sent over a, a link of uh, of your performance. And then I wound up getting hooked. So, Sean, how did you find her? Because what happens is when you're a comedian and you're unemployed for the last nine months, you spend a lot of time on social media and you spend a lot of time on YouTube. So when you're scrolling through stuff, you'll see a friend of yours or an acquaintance start liking something. And one of the videos popped up and I think it was the Barracuda video. So then I started going down the wormhole. I'm watching all the videos. and I'm I, Can I just be honest with you? I had no idea you were on The Voice until Jeff said it in the beginning of the, of the interview. I had no idea. I thought you were just a rocker. Yeah. I had no idea, but that's the beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, a lot you know, of people don't. When you, when you take away a lot of the, the bullshit from social media, like the political stuff, the, the ranting and all that stuff, I have deleted 2000 people in the last two weeks. I have unfollowed about another thousand. And let me tell you something. Well, all my Facebook now is rock music tasty recipe videos and puppies and that's all it is and that's how you can get for the rest of my life and but it's cool because like you go down a wormhole and then you you can find some really amazing i found a dude today i don't know if you've ever heard of him his name is alex melton i haven't all right so he's he's kind of like you like he's taking um like heavier songs, you know, not heavier, but like songs like Some 41, uh, Lit, My Own Worst Enemy. He does a Slipknot mm-hmm. song, a lot of Post Malone stuff, and does them country. Flips the oh, song wow. the country, and they're amazing. So that's, awesome. that's the beautiful thing about social media. You, you're right. able to find people who you never would have heard of before and right. turn your friends on to them. Like I have, you know, 20 people I've turned your music on to, and you know, they're you so all, much. they're all like losing their minds, like saying, why isn't this girl opening up for Hailstorm yet? Why isn't she Hailstorm? I because- actually, did, I actually <laughs> did play a show with Hailstorm. I, I was on that bill. I, I opened up for Hailstorm and Joan Jett. That, what a great triple bill. Wow. Wow. It was, it was a fun show. It was amazing. And then, and then the night before I opened up uh, a show with Dorothy and Joan Jett. Dorothy is a great great band well tell yeah, us about Joan yeah. Jett though how was Joan how was it meeting Joan Jett 
That's oh, gotta be a awesome. Man. She's so sweet. She's so sweet. She's so humble. And about your size. Yeah, and she's tiny, right? <laughs> yeah, she she's really so is. But, it's someone who but, Mar- Mariah can, can see eye to eye with. <laughs> I, yeah, I can finally, you know, look somebody in the face. <laughs> That was one of the coolest experiences of my life of getting to meet Joan Jett uh, before a concert in Baltimore. And she was so sweet and so gracious. And then yeah. after we left, her tour manager emailed us and said, are you guys still here? And we said, yes. We actually got to watch her show on stage, like from behind the drum kit. Oh, and that's awesome. And just, just seeing them perform, like for, I think it was probably like 12, 13,000 people in this gigantic open mm-hmm. field. She wasn't even the headliner. We went there to see Dropkick Murphys. So as soon as Joan Jett was done, we she opened out. up for Dropkick Murphys. It was a festival that had it was in Baltimore called the Shindig, where it's this huge, gigantic field, probably two football fields long. One stage on one end zone, one stage on the other end zone. So when wow. one person's playing, as soon as they're done, you turn around and the other band starts. So there's no turnaround time. They're going right back to back to back. So they were they were the double headliner. So Joan Jett's the one headliner as soon as. She's done dropkick goes on. We were just like, I think we're good. Unless we can go on stage and watch dropkick. I think we're done. That was pretty much the highlight of that whole tour. Leave on a high note, Sean. Oh, big time. Big time. I know. Um, you you asked Mariah uh, earlier about uh influences on country music, but you also did a a cover of um uh the Carrie Underwood song, uh When He Cheats, didn't you? Yeah, I actually cover a couple uh, Carrie Underwood songs. I, I covered that one, and I've also covered um, Two Black Cadillacs. I I do like a lot of country. I like country music as well. Um, I just couldn't see myself really doing it, you know? Right. That's understandable. When, That's when, you were, when you were on The Voice, do you get to pick what you want to do? Like like that audition, the audition part, when, when all their seats are turned around. Did you mm-hmm. pick, or do they give say, okay, this is – a bunch of songs pick something from here or is it just completely your choice you can it basically is a it's a list of like hundreds of songs uh you could pick they're like these are the songs that are cleared you can if you have another song that you want to sing you can um email them the producers and it has to they have to clear it for you um and they ultimately the decision is theirs um but luckily crazy on you was was on there um, and when I saw it in the list, I was like, oh, well, this is perfect because I love heart and I already covered Barracuda. So I was like, I can uh, let me do crazy on you. And I thought that it was really, uh, representative of, you know, of, of who I am. Cause I could go on there. I could play my guitar. You know, it was a song that everybody knew. Um, and so. Were you nervous? You know, it showcases your vocals because Ann Wilson is an amazing vocalist and yeah. of course. it'll challenge anyone. Uh, so it was, it was just the perfect thing. You didn't come across as nervous to me. Were you nervous? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I don't even remember. I like blacked out from being nervous. I'm a very nervous person. I still to this day get nervous before every single show. Did you uh, think that nobody was going to turn around? It, it's not that I thought no one would turn around, but I just wasn't, uh, it was the truth was I didn't know because, um, you know, you don't, you don't know. I, I don't ever go into things assuming like, oh, these people are going to think I'm great. Like, do you know what I mean? Um, you, I do. And you looked relieved to me. Like when Miley turned yeah. around, you, you had this little smile, like, mm-hmm. okay, at least I, I got. Was. I was very, very. Um, and. Yeah, I, I just, I, I didn't really, I didn't, it's not that I thought no one would turn, but I definitely was not expecting to get a four chair turn. That's what I didn't expect. Um, and so that was a really, really pleasant, amazing surprise when I opened my eyes. Um, but yeah, I was, I was extremely nervous. My knees were shaking. I was, I was like praying nonstop before I went on stage. Now and, from, doing, uh, from doing a national TV show like that, what what does that what did that do for you? What kind of doors did that open up? Oh, it opened like it opened almost every door. I mean, not every door, but it it really is just exposure. Um, and it's a matter of what you do with that exposure after you're done with the show. That's when the real work starts. They would always say, you know, your work it doesn't even if you win, 
because it, it really doesn't mean anything nowadays if you win the show. It doesn't. Group it just agreed. doesn't. Um, so really, the only thing that you get out of it is exposure. And that's what I got. It really helped kickstart my career. It, it, it got me a little fan base that I could then, you know, take and, and try to grow. And um, it, it really, it got me, the, it did get me the show. It got me the recognition. Um, you know, it helped me get the show with Joan Jett and Hailstorm. Um, you know, and it was, it, it did, it, it helped a lot. And it, it got me some interview opportunities and of course you know local local stuff was just booming because if you're in your town if you're in your hometown and you do that it's a big deal for your hometown uh so you know and and different places would reach out and i got opportunities to play you know we've played nam now uh two years in a row that's cool and so it's just it's amazing it it really really opens up a lot of opportunities you know one thing you said was one thing you said that really struck a chord is that you said you still get nervous before a show. Uh, I, I had a very, I worked with a very popular comedian one time. And I asked him, mm-hmm. what's the one bit of advice that you can give me? And he goes, if you don't get nervous, it means you don't care. Right. No, it's true. It's true. You know? and, I, and it's very and I true. Care a lot. Yeah. And I do care a lot. And I, you know, um, I know, so, I, I know some people in the industry and I've, I've talked to some people that, um, you know, their, their mentality is kind of, don't bother being humble. You know, you got to go out there. Nobody's made it being humble. You got to go out there and own that crap. And I'm like, well, why can't you own it, but still be humble? Very you true. Very, oh, not, ne- never forget. You always got to be yourself. And that's very, very that's, important. It's, I'm just a very humble person because my parents raised me that way. Um, and I don't see a point in, in, uh, being cocky. And so I've, I've kind of found a way to own the stage, but also be humble. But a part of being humble is being nervous, you know? Uh, so that kind of has a big role to play in it too. I think it's your personality that wins us over as well. I mean, listen, your talent is what drew us in. Your personality is what's going to keep uh, your fans there. Sean right. and I are big fans. So before we kind of like have to end this, um, one more time, and, and maybe Adam, if you can kind of like when in post, you kind of just just put out some information. How I, we really, really want to push you, Mariah. We really are big fans. Uh, we're not just saying that because you're in front of us on Zoom. Um, but um, how, again, one more time, how could people find you the best way our fans could find you? Uh, the best way to find me is on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and if it's, if it's music, oh, YouTube, YouTube, I'm on YouTube. Um, to find my music, I'm on YouTube, uh, Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music. Um, so yeah, and it's all under the same name, uh, Mariah Formica. That's my handle for um, all social media. Awesome. Great. Sean, uh, before we leave, man, how did the shows at Bananas go? Uh, they went. Okay. Uh, with, with that note, <laughs> Listen, did you know, Mariah? We're in the middle of a pandemic. I don't know if uh, if people reference that enough, but yes, we are in the middle of a pandemic, <laughs> which, which has just been great for stand up comedians. You know, uh, yeah, we're we're playing yeah, shows on right? on pickup trucks. Yeah, we're doing shows for yeah. twenty five people that are you know basically thirteen feet apart. So imagine yeah. imagine playing somewhere like the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville or playing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, I know where you're from. Imagine playing uh, SPAC, Saratoga Performing Arts Center, and having, you know, I don't know, 200 people sitting in the front, and they're all 13 <laughs> seats apart from each other. It's kind of like what we're, doing, we're going through right yeah. now. It's pretty horrible. It's pretty horrible. But wow. listen, thank you so much for coming on. Yes. We, we are, we yeah, are, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. We are, we're definitely going to be following you. We want to make sure you guys, you have more success than you can even imagine. So thank you again for coming on. Jeff, I'll throw it back to you. Let's wrap this up. Again, thank you, Mariah. Guys, we have another great show coming up next week. Uh, Please, please share and resubscribe. We are on a new channel now, so uh, we need people to resubscribe. So, again, thank you so much, everybody, and we'll catch you next time. Goodbye.